SV Boney have very kindly sent me another little toy to have a play with. And uh, this time it's there, not two, not three, but five. Yeah, you heard me right, five times Barlow. So, let's take a look. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Well, I'm sat down on the job again. Uh, had a, another little accident. <laughs> I don't know. I was out walking uh, our dog the other day and uh, just stepped over, well, st like, a, like a wide stretch over a little bit of a ravine that was in the path. And uh, my calf muscle went pop. <laughs> I appear to have uh, torn the muscle in my calf, so uh, yeah, a little bit painful, so this is why um, I've been a little bit delayed uh, uploading a new video, uh, but you know, the show must go on and all that. So, let's have a look, uh, SV Boney's um, five times Barlow lens which they've sent me. Oh, excuse me by the way if you hear any snorting in the background, that's my, my dog's just down there and uh, he's a bit of a snorer. <laughs> I, don't, I can't move him, bless him, he looks so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, so SB Bodie's five times Barlow. So what I'll do, we'll just uh, put point the camera down and have a closer look at uh, what this Barlow's like. Right then, uh, the first thing that strikes me with uh, this uh, Barlow is it's built like a tank. It really is solid. It's all a um, full metal housing, so uh, you can be confident about putting uh, any expensive camera equipment in there. Uh, the plastic ones just don't seem to uh, fill me with confidence when you're putting expensive cameras in there. Um, and it's uh, it's all nicely blackened. Now, it's a fully multi-coated uh, lens system that's in this. Uh, I don't know if you can catch the lens there. It's like, a, I, think, I think it's a green hue. There's usually a green hue that's in there. Um, and uh, the optics seem pretty good f for the uh, for the money, uh, to be honest. You've got to remember, this is a budget Barlow lens. And it's a five times Barlow lens. Now, that's going to be quite demanding on the optics. So, to say, you know, like I say, it is usable. I'll get more into how you use this in a minute. Um, so that's pretty much all the uh, plus sides. It's it's you know it's a Barlow lens. It, it's uh, like I say, this metal construction. It's built like a tank. Look after it. It's going to last you a lifetime. So what about the cons on it? Well, the most obvious one, apart from the uh, retaining screw falling out, is the first one I'll mention here. Um, this retaining screw. Now this is common in a lot of. Um, astronomy accessories okay you get this in um, in diagonals and everything so don't worry about that and it's very common in this sort of price range the only problem with these type of thumb screws is they can be a little bit sharp um, and they can kind of gouge your expensive eyepieces up a little bit uh, and that's one thing that people don't like about using these to be honest with you, you know, there is little hacks you can do. You can grind the end of this on a little bit of sandpaper, making sure that there's no uh, sharp edges on there. I know uh, somebody that once went as far as super gluing like a little rubber plug on the end of, uh, of one of these, which uh, was a good idea, actually, and it certainly helped it uh, to, to protect the eyepiece. Now, the uh, other thing, the other... Uh, obvious um, thing is there is no um, thread here at all now usually on some uh, barlows not all bear in mind but uh, on some barlows you do get a thread that will just uh, screw directly to a camera adapter um, as you can see you're going to need a separate kind of adapter for that but like i say at this price range it's um, you know that, that that's to be expected really the other thing that really uh, stumped me at first is um I'll go on to more that I like I say of how to use one of these with it being a five times Barlow, and these are generally aimed at astrophotography and using with cameras. Of if I've got one handy, uh, excuse me a minute. I've got that many boxes of that many things. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. Sorry about that, folks. Here we go. If you've got something like this, um, which is just a, a, a SV Boney's camera, um, it's one of the cheapest they do, it's a great little lunar camera this actually, but uh, using uh, such as a camera like this, you've got nowhere, uh, sometimes you do need to 
put some kind of filtration on Barlow's. And uh, with this Barlow being aimed at astrophotography, I was pretty surprised that uh, it didn't have a filter thread until I actually looked a little bit closer. And uh, I've never actually come across this before, but if you look at this end here, uh, some Barlow's do this part on screws and you can remove the lens cell. But in this case, all it does is reveal the uh, thread uh, for the filter. This is just a, a, a normal metal ring, like a retaining ring. And that means then that you can get your filters and uh, screw them directly to the Barlow like that. Okay, so, and the other thing I was thinking about is, well, you know, these are the type of things you <laughs> you tend to lose in the middle of the night. Um, not that it'd be a great disaster if you did lose this, the baller would still work without it, but you can actually just screw that back on uh, where on the filter thread that's on the filter, <laughs> if you get what I mean. Uh, so, and that'll be just a way of uh, keeping that little part handy, uh, or should I say safe. So now we've had a uh, little look at this, uh, Bolo, how does it perform under the uh, night sky? Well, it's actually surprisingly good for the money. Um, it's, it's okay, all right? I'm, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say it's fantastic in any shape or form because like I say, for this price range, the optics would, you know, if they, if, if they would have to be exceptionally good to get no, uh, uh, discrepancies should I say and I'll talk about those in a little minute you'll see in the photographs now uh, just to give you an idea how powerful this thing is um, I were using this with my 900 telescope okay 900 focal length 130 millimeter you've seen it usually it's inside of me on my videos the sky watcher now with this eyepiece and this is the eyepiece that I used it with um, this is again SV Boney's uh, UV range, uh, sorry UWV range, UW uh, range, just ultra wide. I think that stands for. Uh, now this would give me a magnification of four, forty-five times just on its own in my telescope. Now, if I was to put um, this Barlow lens in, just with this Barlow, one Barlow is going to knock it up to two hundred and twenty-five times magnification. And this is where you're going to have to be very careful when using a Barlow lens of this kind of power. Now, I have talked about um, power and telescopes before in a, in a video. I'll leave a link to uh, that video in the description because it's worth watching. And it's all about, you know, uh, too much power. Is, it really isn't the key to success in astronomy. It's a, um, a bit of a misconception. And it definitely separates the amateurs uh, from the uh, novice or the beginner. Uh, because they they're just power hungry they want everything to be powerful so you would have thought that with 45 times if I'm getting a good view by the way uh, I tested all this on the moon the planets unfortunately are weren't visible they're not in a, um, a suitable viewing location at the minute so stick around though but I am going to be doing more on this and testing it out on the planets later in the year uh, but uh, for now, I did it on the moon. Now, at 45 times with this eyepiece, the moon's going to look something like this uh, that you can see in the picture here. And it's a lovely sort of uh, magnification. To me, it's my favourite type of magnification. Around about 40, um, probably up to 90 times is a nice magnification to be viewing the moon. Now, just by including this, uh, we've knocked it up to 225 times now and the moon now looks like uh, this. And as you can see, it's not too bad at all. Um, and that's just changing. Now, what this, excuse for the background noise, by the way, I do live near a railway. <laughs> There's trains whizzing past all the time. Um, now, what this in actual fact has done, this um, this five times Barlow, has turned this 20, 20 millimeter into a four millimeter eyepiece just by adding the Barlow. So you can see that's that's quite a dramatic difference in uh, magnification. And to be honest with you, it's going to be too much for most entry level telescopes. Now, my 130 millimeter um, 
reflector, the maximum magnification of that is round about 260 times. So you can see at 225 times, even with a 20 millimeter, I'm really pushing things uh, a little bit, not too far, but I am pushing them to a, a, a certain limit. So please be wary of that. You don't want to start overpowering or using um, too much power with these eyepieces. So, you know, th so there's got to be more uh, two or five times Barlow than just giving you magnification. And, uh, and it is true. And, and one of the main reasons that you want to be looking at three and five times Barlow's, if you have got something like this, a small chipped camera. Okay, so now, now these small chip cameras need that extra bit of a boost onto the sensors. So something like a three or a five times Barlow is gonna help you there. The other um, reason why you may need a Barlow and you're going to use a Barlow quite a lot is if you've got something like this, a short tube refractor. Now, this is a, only a, a 400 millimeter uh, refractor and with that 20, with, with this eyepiece on its own, it's going to give me 20 times, okay? Now, with the Barlow, obviously that's instantly knocked it up to 100 times. Um, so, you know, this ma maximum magnification of this is only 120, right? So, we're <laughs> just with like a low powered eyepiece and a high powered Barlow, we're already pushing this to the max. But what that's done, you see, it's really increased your focal length because remember, that's what Barlow's lenses do at the end of the day. They're not actually uh, uh, doubling, tripling, you know, or more your eyepiece. They're actually increasing how long the telescope tube is, um, like a virtual tube, if you like. So adding this to this telescope is making this tube five times longer. So, you know, I'd have something a couple of meters long. Um, um, so that's one of the, you know, a couple of reasons why you would use something like a five times Barlow. But just please be careful uh, with the power. Now, you can go a little bit silly if you wanted to, um, you know, by putting higher eyepieces, uh, uh, higher uh, powered eyepieces in with this but please don't try it on anything other than the moon because um, you're going to need quite a hefty telescope for a start with a lot of aperture because the thing is when you start increasing uh, any kind of glass introducing glass to uh, between the incoming light you're going to lose some of that light and you're definitely going to lose it in something like a five times Barlow um, now here's a class example though this is what happens if you use a I don't know if I've got it on. Oh, I have here, look. I thought for a bit of fun, uh, which I'm sure you're going to do it. I know you will. I want to tell you not to do it, but I'm sure you are going to do it. Uh, this is a six millimeter plossel. And I thought, should I, shouldn't I? Well, come on, I've got to, you know, prove that this that this won't work. And uh, so I put this in with this, pointed it at the moon and got this. Now, as you can see, it is incredibly close up, but it's not very good. And to be honest with you, the, the image was better than the photograph showing. But here on this photograph, you can definitely start seeing uh, where it really is uh, pushing on the quality of the optics. Uh, if you look towards the edges, you get like a little bit of stretching, almost like comorin, um, where, where the craters are becoming slightly stretched. Now that's just, generally that's just purely down to the quality of the optics like i say but this is pushing this ball out to a ridiculous um amount of power in fact that um photograph there is round about 750 times magnification i'm surprised you even got any kind of focus to be honest with that uh but like i say that is really abusing one of these things and unfortunately this is one of the things that a lot of our, uh beginners do uh when when they get into the hobby they hear about magnification they get a nice view of say saturn in a reasonable power and they think well if i put a five times barlow in there it's going to be a five times better view you know uh well 
unfortunately it doesn't work like that um, because what you've got to remember is you're all, you're magnifying every vibration every vibration is going to be magnified you know around about 700 times um, the image is going to be almost impossible to get in uh, to stay in the field of view and you're just not going to get focus you're going to struggle like mad to get any kind of focus mm -hmm. so if you're going to get one of these uh, by the way I the links for this particular bolo I'll leave in the description below uh, just you be you know use it like I say if you've got a very short tube telescope uh, a five times Barlow, maybe a three times Barlow is uh, you're going to be using. But don't forget, SV Boney also do a two times Barlow, which is the one, to be honest, I would recommend. Two times Barlows are a good all rounder. They're going to uh, work with, you know, um, three, maybe four of your eyepieces in the range, as where this is only going to work with maybe one, two of your eyepieces. Um, so do, do, that's something to bear in mind. Like I say folks, I will be doing more on this Barlow as the months go on. As soon as the planets get better situated from my location, uh, we'll uh, give it a good test on the planets. Uh, so until then that about wraps this up for another video I just want to say a massive thank you to SV Boney for sending me this and much apologies for how long this video has taken to get out um, as you, like I've, I've already mentioned you've got to rely on the weather you've got to rely on the right targets to use one of these things and sometimes that can take weeks and with me injury on top of that it kind of has got a little bit delayed but I managed to get it out and uh, and uh, just to just to uh, wrap this up uh, would I recommend this yes I would recommend it if you know what to expect and and uh, out of a five times Barlow don't expect that it's going to give you like um, you know uh, James Webb sort of images it's not going to do that all right it's going to imp definitely improve shorter to the uh, refractors um, and reflectors uh, but just be careful with what I preach you use with it. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you watched this far, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the rest of it. Especially hit that like button. It really does uh, help the channel. And make sure you've got the notifications turned on. Uh, therefore, you know when I'm going to upload my next video because they're a little bit all over the place at the minute. But we're, we're trying to get it all smoothed out. Uh, but you never know. Just keep this leg mended. That's all I need to do. Don't want any more injuries uh, to delay things even more. Well, anyway, folks, I will see you soon. Take good care of yourselves. Bye for now.